Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about AWS ECS or Elastic Container Services which is a container orchestrator provided by AWS. There are some prerequisites to this course. You should have a basic working knowledge on AWS. That means you should know what AWS console is and how to use it. You should have a basic understanding of AWS command line interface, what EC2 instances are, what is a VPC, what is load balancer, auto scaling, etc. So basically you should have a basic knowledge of AWS essential services. Then you should know a little bit about containers on a very basic level. Even though I'll be discussing about containers, but it's good to have at least knowing what containers mean. This will be our agenda. I'll tell you about container and Docker basics. Even though I'll not take deep dive into containers itself, then you'll see how to create pull push Docker images using Docker commands. Then you'll see how to push and pull images from Elastic Container Registry or ECR, which is a private Docker registry provided by AWS ECS. Then you'll see what ECS task definitions are, ECS cluster, what are container instances, how services play a very important role in ECS. And finally, you'll see ECS Fargate which is a serverless implementation of AWS ECS, basically without any server. First, let us go ahead and dis define what is a container. So the one line definition of container is isolated packaged environment. From Wikipedia, this is the definition which will get an object for holding and transporting something. So let's try to relate these two in IT and non IT terms. The first definition which I'll take is the Wikipedia's one, an object for holding and transporting something. That means you can hold something here and you can transport it to anywhere else. The transporting something is a very powerful feature of container. That means containers are very portable in a sense that you can run containers on your on-premise data centers, on your personal laptop, or on any of the cloud providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or GCP. Now the IT definition or the technical definition in IT terms, isolated packaged environment. So it says that it's a packaged environment which is isolated. So by packaged environment, it means that it contains the complete package for an application. What do you think a package would be for an application? It would contain the operating system itself, then the application dependencies. For example, if you are running a Python web application, you should have Flask in it. And then of course you should have Python in it. And then the application itself. Now if you relate these two or if you combine these two, isolated package environment which, which is portable or which can be transported. That means you can run applications anywhere. It can be your laptop, it can be your on-premise data center, it can be AWS EC2 instances, it can be Azure VM instances, or Google Compute Engine, or using orchestrators like Kubernetes or ECS or Azure Kubernetes services. Let's see a little bit more into containers and how containers evolved. So in the initial days or in the legacy days, applications used to be hosted in a different way. We used to have hardware, basically CPU, RAM, storage, network, firewall etc then we used to install operating system on top of the hardware like linux windows or mac and then we used to install our applications or run our applications or host our applications on this operating system you could host multiple applications on the same operating system which again typically was was never suggested but if you wanted you could so basically this is a server environment from this green box is your server, install an operating system on your server and then you host your application on top of the on top of the server. Single server to single application or multiple applications. Then things were changed when virtualization was introduced. The reason virtualization became so famous because in a single server environment or basically in the server environment or in this case a lot of resources were being wasted so virtualization bridged that gap 
it utilize the resources in a very nice way and to reduce cost so basically you have the same hardware cpu ram storage network etc instead of your operating system you have hypervisor here hypervisor like vmware zen hyper-v zen is used by aws and hyper-v is used by microsoft azure and the hypervisor runs multiple virtual machines so in case of aws the virtual machines are ec2 instances in case of microsoft azure the virtual machines are azure vm instances in case of gcp the virtual machines are google compute engines and then you can host one or multiple applications on a single virtual machine for example vm1 would contain web application or the web tier vm2 would contain the logic tier or backend application and vm3 would contain your database server so each virtual machine would be like a single server but much cheaper than this environment then came the containers so the underlying infrastructure remains the same nothing changed you have we still have our hardware basically cpu ram storage network etc and then we have our operating system on top of hardware or operating system on top of vm also so basically this operating operating system could as well have been on a virtual machine but now we have something called container daemon or the thing which runs containers docker is the most famous in fact the sua motto for containers or for container technology using container daemon we run containers and each container would house a single application remember this you cannot have multiple application on a single container you can only have one application in one container and each containers are isolated from other containers that means container 1 would never know that container 2 is running and each of them is a packaged environment that means container 1 would contain would contain an operating system and an application environment which can be different than container 2 which might contain a different application and a different operating system for example container 1 can contain java application and container 2 can contain python application running on the same operating system and using the same hardware now this operating system can as i said be hosted on top of a virtual machine as well let's take an example the same thing we have operating system which is a unix based operating system we have docker daemon and then we have three containers the first container is running an application written in java spring boot and is being hosted on Red Hat operating system. Container 2 is completely different. It is hosting a web application with Python, Flask and SUSE operating system. And container 3 is actually the database tier which is hosting MySQL on Ubuntu operating system. Now, th these three containers are three different packaged environment. Container 1 has a package which contains Java, Spring Boot and Red Hat. Container 2 is another package, different than the first one, which contains Python, Flask and SUSE. And Container 3 contains altogether a different package, which contains MySQL and Ubuntu. Now, one very important feature of containers are that containers are very lightweight and they are really, really fast. I'll tell you the reason shortly. Now, if you notice, we have an operating system which is unix based which is host which can be hosted on a hardware directly or on a virtual machine also and here the all the three operating systems are also unix unix based all are different distributions of unix the first one is red hat the second one is suse and the third one is ubuntu if you know how unix works the, the basic kernel is same for all of them and you have a delta or you know some things some portion of the kernel is different in Red Hat, some other portion of the kernel is different in SUSE and some other portion of the kernel is different in Ubuntu. That means Red Hat has a little bit of different kernel than this one but the core kernel is same as, the, as that of the Unix based operating system which is here. Same is the case with SUSE whose kernel is a little bit of deviation from the basic Unix based kernel and so is the case with Ubuntu. So if the operating system is a red hat operating system then this container package would not contain any delta it would use the same kernel of the underlying operating system 
In case of Suse, again it would be different. The Docker daemon would handle the delta for Suse operating system. That means the delta between Suse and the Red Hat which is here. Taking the core kernel which is same for both Suse and Red Hat. The delta would be handled by Docker daemon. So is the case with Ubuntu as well. The delta would be handled by Docker daemon but the core kernel is same as that of Red Hat. So this is a very powerful feature if you think about it. Let us go and take a look at our virtual machine or the virtualization environment. In the virtualization environment, we have a hypervisor, basically which is co a completely different program than that of the operating system. And of course, each virtual machine can have different operating systems, but there's a translation involved. See, all the virtual machines need to use the hardware eventually, and they have to go via the hypervisor. Depending on the hypervisor, the translation could be different. That means if this virtual machine needs some amount of CPU, it would ask the hypervisor. Hypervisor would translate it as per the underlying hardware. Same is the case with this one. If this virtual machine needs some amount of RAM, it will tell this hypervisor. Hypervisor will do some translation and then it will hit this hardware and give that amount of RAM to this virtual machine. Same is the case here. But in case of containers, the translation is very less. The only thing which you have to bother about, or not you, basically the Docker daemon will have to bother about is the delta for Suse and the delta for Ubuntu. And in this case, nothing has to be taken care of. So if this application makes some hardware call, this call would be directly transferred to the kernel of this operating system, which is also Red Hat. As this is also Red Hat and this is also Red Hat, no translation is needed. For SUSE, there can be a little bit of translation, but the overhead is very less as, as compared to virtual uh, as compared to hypervisors. If there are some calls made by this application which is which falls in the category of SUSE feature, then it will be handled by Docker Daemon in the delta. And eventually it will be passed to the unix kernel but the core kernel calls will never be changed no transla translation would be needed in the in that case or those cases so is the case with ubuntu so that's why containers are very lightweight and very fast you can spin up or start containers really fast as opposed to virtual machines you can scale containers really fast you do not need to have cool time or instance warming period etc so you start a container, it will be up and running then and there. Don't have to do anything. And one more very nice feature is that each container is an isolated environment. So each container, you can think of each container as a program running, its in, running in its own address space. So basically this program will never interfere with this program. And this program will never interfere with this program. Each containers are nothing but individual programs in the eye of the operating system now the underlying things are handled by docker daemon but on a very high level if if i were an operating system and there are containers running i would see those containers as any other program running in the operating system 